Hello, my fellow Arsenal fans in the Omas here, giving you another video. I've definitely been contemplating doing a video this week, apart from my kind of review from uh, from the Everton game. And there had been a few news that I kind of dropped uh, in and around the whole um, pre um, transfer business. But I thought, you know what, I'll leave it because I don't 100% believe in some of the stories just as of yet. But as we do approach January um, and get into January, that's when I think I'll probably be talking about it a little bit more um, going forward. But for today's video, we got to talk about the Arsenal-Southampton game. It is on Saturday, 3 p.m. kickoff. I got to say I'm not looking forward to it just because 3 p.m. kickoff means that I can't get it on BT Sport, I can't get it on Sky, and now I gotta go through a whole bunch of dodginess to be able to try to watch this game, which it's just it's just gonna annoy me, um, and yeah, it's gonna suck. But it is Southampton, and like I've been saying it over the past few weeks, we're really from the beginning of the season. I've said that the teams are in and around us. We gotta pick up draws, which we didn't against Everton. The top four teams from last season, City, Liverpool, Chelsea, and Man United, expect losses, home and away for them. Gotta expect that. And into the teams that are above us, uh, that are uh, in the bottom half of the table for the most part, the nine teams, um, we gotta be getting wins, home and away. And that's what Southampton are. They are one of those teams uh, that are in the bottom half of the table. They're one of the nine, and we got to beat them like my thumbnail in the video the preview for Everton was must not lose this has to be a must win game not just because of the Everton um loss but because it's Southampton we gotta win like there is no if buts or maybes about that I, I need to stress this Mikel Arteta so there is no there's no losing uh for this game no drawing. A draw is unacceptable. Um, and I do say that it will be a tough game based on Arsenal's recent form, based on some of the players that they have here that uh, i got to kind of go about. So in goal, they've got Alex McCarthy. Um, but I am hearing s some talks that Willie Caballero is supposed to be up for a contention with this game, um, which... Some people might seem to think is a little bit easier, but I got to say that I think that probably makes things a little bit worse. I mean, Alex McCarthy, I think, is decent, uh, but Willie Caballero, even though, you know, he's a little bit older, um, I got to say that... Just move this around. I got to say that he's got bags of experience. He knows how to be in the big games. Previously with uh, Man City... Oh, Really need to change this around. Okay, there we go. Let me lock that in. So, Wibby Caballero, previously at City, tons of experience, has won things before, knows how to play against the big teams. So, I think that Wibby Willie Caballero is going to be just as good as an Alex McCarthy, if not even better. So, potentially having him start for Southampton is. It's not going to make it any easier for Arsenal, I will say that. Then in defence, um, in the game against Brighton, they went with a 4-4-2. Um, and I think that they will probably go with something similar to that as well. Um, my guess as unless some type of injuries happen whereby it's not feasible to be able to do that. But um, I think that they're going to stick with Kyle Walker-Peters. Um, the rest of their players in defence, I haven't heard of. Um, so that is... Mohamed Salusu, uh, Lyanko, and Valentino Veramento. Um, no idea if they're any good or not. I'm going to say that maybe they're just decent and just kind of leave it as that. Um, there are talks on um, some of their injured players are cu coming back um, as well. Um but yeah, that was the defense that they had up against Brighton, which is interesting because we also drew against Brighton 1-1. And that doesn't also look good for Arsenal, who I think needs to win this game. 
Uh, then in midfield, they got Nathan Redmond at right wing. I expect him to continue playing there. James Ward-Prowse in central midfield. I expect him to continue um, playing there as well. Um, very good player, in my opinion. Uh, Oriol Romeu, former uh, Chelsea uh, player, um, still there as well. And Nathan Teller, who I've never heard of, um, will be playing at left wing. And I think that that will kind of still be the same thing for Arsenal. Then uh, there's this guy, Orm Armando Broja. Um, he scored in the last game against Brighton um, and was taken off for uh, Adam Armstrong. But I am hearing talks that Che Adam, who also started in that game and didn't score, um, is injured and that he won't be available to play. So I do think that, again, that will be one whereby Che Adam will either start or... These are the these are the options. The, these the, here are these options. Adam Armstrong was what last season was the championships. I think second goal scorer, if not top goal scorer, behind Emi Buendia. Um, if not him, then they will go with Shane Long, very good experienced player, or the Arsenal legend himself, Theodore Walcott. That's right. Theo Walcott could be an option to start against Arsenal for Southampton. Um, and, you know, even though he doesn't have the rapid pace as he once did, if you're talking 20, 30 yards, like, Walcott has still got a good number of pace. He still can score you a goal if need be. Just doesn't have the stamina to be able to kind of keep it up for 90 minutes. But um, still, I think that they have more than enough on that bench to be able to kind of replace Jay Adam, who has turned out to be, a, you know, a really good all-round player, a player that we were actually once linked with before he went to Southampton. Um, so it's good to see nice that he has developed really nicely as a striker. I know previously he was more of like a, a winger and, and a striker, so he, he's done pretty well from uh, playing uh, in the championship. And then with Arsenal... Um, where do I even get started? So, with Arsenal against Everton, I, like many fans, hope for change. I hope for change. I can assure you, I hope for change. <laughs> However, we all know who's in charge and who start to resurface some of the colours that he's previously shown. Uh, Mikel Arteta and some of his decision making um, with him not really changing and adapting um, and not playing players based on form but rather playing players based on age and reputation uh, and I do think that we're going to see a little bit of that um, in this game here so starting from the back Ramsdale yes I think should start I think he's done pretty well even though I, I don't think that Leno was that bad, um, I, I do think that Ramsdale is a better goalkeeper. Really, just, truly, just comes down to a different skill set. Uh, I think uh, Tomiyasu will also continue playing. Ben White, Gabriel, and I think that Kieran Tierney will start this game. Not sure if he'll finish the game, to be uh, really honest. Um, but I think that that's how, and especially when Kieran Tierney's getting an assist, I think it's, you know, like, Give him the game. Give him the game. You know, let's let's see how he does with another 60 minutes. If, if he still needs more time, then you could kind of rest him if need be. If not, continue playing him is, is how I see it. Uh, I don't think there'll be any change with the defensive line. Um, I would like to see changes in midfield because I think that that's where the problem is uh, for me. Uh, I Like the reason why Lacazette is coming from attack into midfield to get the ball uh, to then try to do things and then it means that he is not in the right attacking position to be able to deal with maybe crosses or just really just to be in the box is because he's busy there trying to be a number 9, a number 10 and a number 8 to come up, come and receive the ball um, but I don't see I don't see much changes there 
The only thing I see is Lacazette being dropped um, and then Aubameyang to be back. Even though, in my opinion, I think that the guy who should really be coming into play for Arsenal up front should be Eddie Nketiah because based on that last game against Everton, he looks like the better player. Um, and he was just giving you more, create a couple of chances for other players. And I think that's more so what you need. But I have no faith that now with Xhaka being back, that Arteta will go and play players based on form. So Aubameyang will be back, in my opinion, even though I think Eddie and Ketia should play up front. Um, I would like to see Martinelli on the right and Saka on the left. But I know what's more likely to happen is how we started off the last game with Saka on the right and Martinelli on the left because Arteta um, has a big, big fascination with playing with inside forwards. Just Or uh, inverted, um, uh, was it, foot players whereby left footers should be on the right side and right footers should be on the left side. It's just, oh God... I, I, I don't know. For me, I, I think you saw the formula two games ago, or the three games ago. You know, Saka scored on the left against Newcastle, play him on the left side. Martinelli scored on the right, playing on the right side, put him there on the right. Um, and if need be, then they can always swap in the transition. But we're not really getting any of that. So, um, it really is a, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But um, for me, that's how I would go. But I think Arteta will go with Saka on the right and uh, Martinelli on the left. Um, and I think um, that Odegaard will play because that's his guy. Uh, and you know what? To really be fair to Odegaard, like he, you know, he's, he's done enough to deserve to start. But I, I don't think... Like he should have started a couple games ago. I, I think to get the best out of a Bamiang, I think you need to play Lacazette. Um, but yeah, yeah. For me, I'd probably go with Smith Rowe personally at the number 10. But I think that Odegaard will start uh, overall. And then in midfield, Arteta will play Thomas Party and he will play Granit Xhaka in that central midfield. You, there are no bones about it. Those two will play whether you love them, whether you hate them, um, and just any type of strategic element goes right out the window uh, with uh, those two uh, dinosaurs just in there, just slow moving. And it will just be something similar to what we saw against Everton. Um, and I really hope we win because a win is a must. You know, we've got, I think, 24 points so far with coming up to five games no four games left uh, I think with 15 yeah 15 games played to whereby we're halfway in the season so we, we got we got to pick up as many points as we can got to pick up as many points as we can because the game after this I believe is against West Ham and for me that is a straight that it should be a draw but uh, don't be surprised if we don't get anything from the game um but if I was to pick the midfield, I'm really going to go with Sambi and Maitland-Niles. Uh, for me, Sambi deserved to start a couple of games ago. Same thing with Maitland-Niles. He deserved to start about three, four games ago and didn't really do anything wrong except the fact that Party was somewhat back um, and just went with the more experienced ones who have just not playing well. And Mikel Arteta refuses to then make the changes to be able to do so. And will live and die by the sword one way or another. And when I mean die, I mean his job as Arsenal manager will die by this because there's only so much that fans could take. There's only so much that the team's performance could take. And yeah. That's what it is. Uh, once again, I said I'm going to go for one all draw um, in this game. Uh, I think that I think a draw... No. God. No, I'm, I'm thinking of the Everton game. This game is a win. A win. Not a draw. A win. Where is my head at? It is a win. It has to be a win. It's Southampton. And I'm going to go with a 2-1 Arsenal win. Uh, 
No, I'm going to go with a 1-0 Arsenal win. And here's why. Our attack is shit. And our defence is somewhat good. And we've got a very good goalkeeper. And that's why we will win 1-0. But if you disagree with me, leave your comments below. Uh, please do remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me hear your thoughts on this game. Uh, and if you have any other things there that are on your mind on the topic of Arsenal, I know everybody is pretty much annoyed. That's right. Sentiment, P-dubs, uh, Joseph Masenko, I, 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 I hear your cries. I, I really do. Um, but I want to be completely fair to Arteta because I've been told that I'm not really fair towards him so I, i've given him to the end of the season end of the season like my stance hasn't really changed if he finishes eighth or below he's gotta go um and right now things are looking very tough to whereby we don't even look like we're gonna even finish eighth so let's back him until the end of the season um because at the end of the season if we don't finish at least seven for above then you can't really defend him you cannot defend the indefensible you can't go and finish three seasons eighth in a row and talk about that there's progress when all the numbers at least so far are showing that there isn't really any progress that things are either exactly the same or they've gone backwards so i will leave it there I will continue to support as much as I can um, and try to present a positive message. Look and hope for the good things and hope that the bad never comes, but it will. Uh, and then we'll take it from there. But until, until then, I will see you all on my next video, which there will be a link in the description below.